if we're going to talk about setting boundaries with a pathological narcissist, whether they have borderline personality disorder, which I'll refer to as BPD, narcissistic personality disorder, NPD, and antisocial personality disorder, aka sociopath, ASPD, you have to expect that they won't understand the necessity of the boundary, that they will personalize it, potentially be offended, angered. They will justify their negative reaction to it because of distorted, odd ways of thinking and potentially hurt you. Not all people with personality disorders hurt others, but if you are in a relationship and you are, as the human magnet syndrome says, which is the book that I authored, it says that codependence almost always well into high 90 percentage are going to unconsciously, reflexively, and predictively fall in love with a pathological narcissist and vice versa. It's important to understand diagnostically what is a person that is pathologically narcissistic. And they are one of three personality disorders, and that could be narcissistic, borderline, or antisocial personality disorders. And what ties all personality disorders together is an inability to understand, empathize, and stop the harm you cause others because of the blindness, the lack of empathy that you have. And so people with personality disorders do not change very easily. They have rigid thinking patterns. They have rigid reaction patterns. And they are not good candidates for psychotherapy because psychotherapy requires someone's ability to be conscious of having a problem, a form of what we call cognitive dissonance, feelings of discomfort and anxiety, guilt, sadness, or whatever is what I would call a negative or bothersome feeling that eventually pushes someone to want to solve it. If you have a personality disorder, you don't get there because you feel justified for how you treat others. You tend to feel like you're the victim and the person that claims to be hurt deserves it. If you are a codependent and you are in a relationship with a pathological narcissist and you want to set a boundary or terminate the relationship, it will never go easily. If you finally decide to set a boundary, such as end a relationship, or if you have been silent and afraid of setting boundaries for good reason, because if your uh, partner is a covert narcissist, which is a subcategory of NPD or sociopath or ASPD or BPD, they're going to hurt you, whether it's subtle emotional verbal abuse or very in your face active physical abuse, and there's no way around it. So if you set a boundary such as wanting to leave or finally hold the narcissist accountable, there will be a reaction. And if you were what I would call a healthy person, healthy people in my definition have problems, can use therapy, but they never become encumbered by the problem because they know when to use their own resources or, or seek help from external resources, such as therapists. If you were this healthy person, first, you would not, according to the human magnet syndrome, you wouldn't be in this relationship. And if you accidentally were, you would have experience in knowing that when you set boundaries, you'll have success. But codependence, and we're talking about codependence, and that's what I almost always talk about. People who are attracted to the narcissist tend to almost always fall in love and, and then become entrapped by their narcissist. And so if you are a codependent and you have a partner who has one of these personality disorders and you set a boundary, you must have, and I call this, uh, I come up, I, I create terms to describe a lot of what I believe. You must have developed what I call predictive awareness. Predictive awareness is the ability to predict the reaction that will follow the boundary. Because if you have studied yourself, your vulnerabilities, your blind spots, and what you're susceptible to if and when you're manipulated, and you learn that, and then you also study the narcissist personality type, their trigger points, their ability to hurt 
abuse, neglect, gaslight you, and you study all this before you do anything, then when you decide to set the boundary, you can predict, predictive awareness, you can predict the outcome. And so it's kind of funny because a lot of people joke to me, some, some are serious, they, they call me a psychic. I'm not a psychic, but I can very easily predict the outcome of my client's boundary if I know enough about my client and, and, their, and their partner. So when you can predict the outcome and you know that the narcissist will have an extreme reaction, which we call a narcissistic injury, which can include narcissistic rage, which can be something that will really, really harm you and devastate you. But you can predict confidently that the boundary will elicit a very strong response. A pathological narcissist, someone with NPD, BPD, ASPD, they might not tell you directly, but they will do almost anything to keep from having someone abandon them because the idea of being alone is to suffer from pathological loneliness, which is incredibly painful for an, a, a codependent, but it's exponentially more painful. Plus, these narcissists don't understand because it's not a conscious experience that they suffer huge trauma from abandonment, huge trauma. And the nature of these personality disorders, they sequester those trauma memories, just like PTSD, in a part of the brain that blocks the memory of them. But even without the memory of them, the reaction to them is similar or actually more intense than the memory. So they may not remember, well, I don't want you to leave because my mom abandoned me, so I'm going to stop you. They will just have a very extreme response. So let me summarize. So you're codependent. You are in treatment, hopefully something like the treatment that I provide that teaches you predictive awareness. Um, you have empowered yourself by knowing exactly what your vulnerabilities are for setting boundaries and how the narcissist exploits them. And you have studied with help of a psychotherapist, this predictive awareness of mastery, what is going to happen. So now you're going to set boundaries. And if you set a boundary with a narcissist, say you want to divorce them, they're going to do almost anything they can to change your mind. People with NPD do have empathy. It's just not a lot. But if partner, the spouse, the boyfriend, the, the, the boss, the, the sibling, the person that you are intending to terminate the relationship with are surprised by it. And they don't have empathy. Now, this is important. If they don't have empathy or they have limited empathy and the person is a covert narcissist, which means they are pretending to be something that they are not. They can be a teacher, a rabbi, a loving mother, father, and the world believes them. That means they have some form of sociopathy, covert narcissism, or they are just a sociopath, ASPD. That means that false story they created of being loving, sweet, sincere, smart, they depend on people believing that so that they can survive in the world, have a job, have friends, have a backstory that's believable. And the idea of someone exposing them is equivalent to choking them and taking their oxygen away. Because one is it might take away everything that they love and need, which is you know attention, support, two, money, respect, family, and they will do anything to protect that. So it starts with an understanding that who you are setting a boundary with is in the case of this video, has sociopathic traits or is a sociopath that has a tremendous amount of hard earned, deceptively, dysfunctionally, malignantly earned, stolen wealth. Um, I guess that's a good way of putting it, that they will do anything to protect. So what do they have to do? If someone says, okay, well, I am telling everyone that you know you, you've had affairs with this that, and the other that you're you know you've stolen money you're a crook or whatever and i'm going to expose you well first they're going to have a narcissistic injury 
because they're they have a personality disorder. Two, the natural but unconscious fear of abandonment is going to click in. So that is going to embolden them to even be more angry and enraged. And three, you're about to expose them and take away everything that is important to them. Money, fame, uh, prestige. So they're going to do anything to shut you up, to shut you down, to ruin your credibility. So if you know this and you're trying to escape the relationship, then it makes absolutely no sense to expose them publicly because, well, you're never going to win. I don't care how angry you are. If you're a client of mine or you're watching this video and you have this knowledge, whether you've gotten it from my book, The Human Magnet Syndrome, or you purchased one of my educational seminars you know, found on selfloverecovery.com, you will know that you can't win and perhaps survive if you call this person out. So if you have predictive awareness and you've kind of done what I call is my worst case scenario technique, which is basically when you consciously, methodically develop the most realistic worst consequence, and you have to make sure it, it's accurate. And then you decide if you can survive it. And once you decide you can survive it, then you should have the confidence to move forward. To anyone who is in a relationship with a pathological narcissist who happens to have sociopathic traits, which means they're a covert narcissist or is a sociopath, and you want to set a boundary to teach them a lesson by uncovering their true selves or you just want to end a relationship by uncovering their true selves, take their mask off, you're going to get hammered and you're going to wish you never did it. Just run and don't feel like you are losing. You are surrendering by not saying anything.